Uh, beep, beep. What is up, ninjas? My name is Semworld, and welcome to the Complete Guide to Master Serum. Thank you guys for joining me, those 2,000 of you that are still following this series. You know, this is not one of the more popular series as a lot of people don't like to do a lot of their own sound design. So congrats to you if you're still following the series along and you're learning how to create your own sounds for your music. Um, now today, guys, we are going to be targeting pads, the sweet, silky, you know, atmospheric, uh, they tend to play chords uh, kind of pads, okay? Now when it comes to pads, guys, you know, the saw, again, is going to be one of the strongest things you can use. But don't let that deter you away from using other wavetables because today I'm going to show you guys cool things you can do with wavetable-ish pads that you can't do with saw pads that well. Okay, now the first pad we're creating is going to be the most common one that you're going to find that is used in music, and that is going to be the super saw pad. So you guys know how to create the super saw sound. We did that in one of the first episodes of the Complete Guide to Master Serum. So that's the first sound anybody can create and learn how to make like that. Okay, uh, so we're going to be doing the same thing here, guys. We're going to be going eight voices on both oscillator A and oscillator B. Again, if you guys remember, that means eight saws is coming from this one and this one. We're detuning them, which each saw individually, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, and eight from each oscillator will get detuned slightly negative and slightly positive, while at the same time getting panel left and right to create a wider sound that's what serum does and you can change that in the global section if you want again a more mono pad uh, here when we hear this and brace your ears it might be a bit loud you know it sounds like okay cool you know it's kind of cool but in order to make a pad first off we need to get the envelopes right and as you guys know already the way you alter that envelope is gonna alter the way the sound sounds like so if we give it a bit of attack which means the sound will slowly start to come in then now it starts to sound more like a pad okay now, as you notice, when I let go, it doesn't really sound like a pad, it just abruptly ends. So we already know we need to add a bit of release to that. So that's what we're going to be doing here. And again, the release is the tail. After you let go, since the sustain is set to zero, from here to here, how long does it take for, for the sound to go back to a value of zero or negative 64 dB? So you can see that already sounds really beautiful, okay? Um, a, a lot of the times, pads are very simple to create, and a lot of the times it's simplistic. Again, simplicity, guys, when it comes to sound design. If you know what you're doing, you know what you're going for, you don't have to do crazy stuff to try and achieve something. From here, we're going to add a low pass, and this is what's going to make the pad sound the way it does. And a lot of times, the pads aren't going to be that open unless you're making trance music. So Now, once we add this, we start to get more of that nice vibe that we characterize pads for. No reverb still, but you can hear that it has that nice atmosphere. It has the feels, as people would put it. Um, now, a tip I will give you guys is the first off is that a lot of times pads are very dynamic. And what I mean by this is it's easy for us to put the attack and release up and then forget about it, uh, the envelope section. But one of the best ways to make your pad feel like it's evolving more is by increasing the release and increasing decay and lowering down the sustain. Here, you can mess around with your slopes between the attack and the decay, decay to sustain, and sustain to release. This will create a more nice rounded pad that has a lot of dynamics to it because now the volume starts to change more rather than up all the way and then down all the way. Now we're going up all the way going slowly down to the sustain around the mids or, or top 75% volume, and then we're finally going down to that zero. But that creates a more dynamic experience for your listener if you're not making EDM and you're making something more atmospheric. This is the best way to go about it. We can hear that volume coming down a bit, and again, it's adding more vibes, more emotion. Okay. Um, so here's a nice little pad. Now, the cool thing with the uh, with the filter, guys, is that you can go with a more lower um, oct or sorry dB ladder filter. What that means is like 6, 8, 18, uh, whatever they are. You guys know we talked about those, what they mean. So that you let more highs out and it doesn't sound so uh, choked, like you're getting rid of the highs. You can definitely do that there. A little bit of highs doesn't hurt anybody. Okay. From here, let's assume that you want this pad to kind of cover more frequency range, then we can definitely go up an octave or down an octave on uh, both our oscillators, which will cover more. Okay. 
Um, now from here, we can increase the drive and add resonance. Now when we add resonance, we turn the pad more into a alien vibe kind of track because as you guys know with the resonance, we're boosting the part where the cutoff starts to kick in and that creates that nice sound right there. It's a nice sound if you like it. Now, a cool tip I'll give you guys is that you can use the key track so that resonance moves around so it doesn't sound the same always. So that way, we're going to lower the cutoff just a bit more because the key track, if you guys remember, is opening up the it's opening up the pad as we play higher in the keyboard. So maybe here, let's put it up a little higher and pull this back more. Okay, let's add a bit of release there more. I feel like it needs it. Okay, if we take away the resonance. We still sound nice, but it doesn't have that nice vibe to it. So I'm gonna leave that resonance up for our pad here, but that's a cool trick you can do. You can also automate that with an LFO. Okay, now from here, let's deal with the effects. Now, when it comes to pads, effects are everything because you can do a lot with it. First off, if you want to create a pad that is very grungy for some reason, uh, you can add distortion. And that's going to create these nice texture to it, depending on how many notes you're playing. Right now, I'm only playing two notes. So if I put two more, you hear that nice distortion. Um, you know, it kind of feels like nostalgia. You're adding a bit of degradation in quality. The problem with pads and distortion, though, is the fact that every note, think of it as getting distorted. And the more notes you start to play, the more the distortion t starts to build up. And we start to hear a nasty sound. So if I push this hard, it gets to like someone fucked up the mix. But <laughs> we can definitely add a bit of it slowly. And then we can also automate it. Maybe at a slower rate. Now, the cool thing is that you can use the distortion to your advantage. You can hear it and be like, mm, yeah, clap, man. Uh, but if you put reverb on top of it, you're going to smoothen it out a bit more because reverb tends to kind of um, spread or, or, or diffuse the sound a bit. So that distortion sound can definitely add a lot more now. Okay, now if I get rid of the distortion, reverb is good as well to kind of make the pads sound more in the back and sound more majestic. It also makes it sound a lot wider. Uh, okay, so. The cool thing here is we do have like kind of like this chorus effect, which is the spin, stat, and rate. So you can definitely give it more of a vibrato. Uh, this vibrato does a lot, but you don't need the reverb if it's not needed, but it does add a lot of uh, elements into that. Okay. From here, guys, you guys know about the chorus effect. So the chorus is also a good one to use. That's going to give it more of a chorus vibe. So you already have a bunch of saws getting detuned. So here you just detune them a lot more. So you can hear the difference there. So the chorus is good for that. You can also use it very subtly, 
Uh, but those are going to be majority of the stuff you're using. Um, you can definitely choose to add a flanger or a phaser. The, as you guys know, those are LFO effects. And what I mean by that is that they change over time. They have a rate to them. That is, um, uh, it's affecting the frequency here. The rate in the phaser is affecting this frequency moving left and right. And the rate here is affecting, I believe, the depth. Uh, so you can use those if that's what you want. Feedback increases the volume of that effect. So you guys know that with the flanger, with the phaser, you have the frequency moving back and forth. Here you can set BPM locks. You can do like maybe every two bars change. Okay, uh, and that's going to be it for this pad, okay? So this is a very chancy pad. You can definitely open it eventually. Um, to get a very chancy pad, very euphoric, you can detune it a lot more. That's another very... Well, those are nice pads that we can create, okay? Um, now, not all pads need to sound lush like that, like trancy and stuff. Uh, there's some nice pads I really like from Rufus Soul. And um, for instance, one of their pads is just going to contain two sine waves. And essentially, what we're doing with this is creating a sound by detuning manually here. So that way, we get something that's like... Okay, those are going to be more mellow style of pads, but again, the envelope needs to change or else it's going to sound like crap. So we got to add the nice detuned uh, release and vibe to that so that we get the nice... Hell, even this attack could come in a lot slower. Okay, you can put up the one of the signs up. Okay, open voice it a bit. Okay, add a bit of reverb to that. Okay, if you want to make it wide, definitely you can put two voices, three, and that's what's going to create. It sounds really nice. Okay, um, essentially with these kind of pads are more analog based. You know, it's just two sides. And they sound really nice together in all honesty. That's The only thing you have to look out for in these pads is that they're very resonating because a sine wave, as you guys know, is just a fundamental frequency. So when we have these two overlapping, it creates a lot of a spike in our spectrum. And we got to know how to deal with that when you're doing that. So you got to make sure it doesn't overdo it. Uh, but other than that, sine pads are really are a great way to get something nice that sounds very analog. A uh, perfect example of this is Rufus Assault. Now, um, when it comes to it, we can also use other stuff like triangle waves similarly or even the saw similarly. Uh, it's just, again, preference to how you want it to sound like. We did the lush sound of the saw, but you can also... Create more of a less... And it's all thanks to this envelope, because if the envelope is crap, then it doesn't sound like a pad at all. It sounds like a lead or something. So hopefully you guys understand how important the, the envelope, the attack is, is important. Now, when it comes to pads, one of the cool things, again, is choosing uh, wavetables. And the reason I like wavetables is because you get to change the pad over time. And you can put an LFO on the wavetable position. Let's assume we have this one. And let's say we put eight voices on this. Do everything we did with the uh, trancy one. Same stuff. You know, put a bit of reverb on that. And let's just slow this down a bit. Okay. 
Okay, let's give it that attack, that release, that sustain, and then we should be good there. Let's add another wave table here, maybe a vowel one and detune that. And that sounds a lot cooler because this guy and this guy are moving. So if I move this. Can also add movement by putting a, a, a elephant on the cutoff. Can also add like sync, bend, plus, bend, minus the warps we know already to do changes. So that way if you have like, let's say like a super saw pad, you can also add change to it. Don't get me wrong. It just sounds a lot better when you have a sort of wave table to go around. Okay, the other cool stuff too is that you can have the pad do cool stuff. Like if you want this to be a pad that you just use and that's it in the break, you can do a lot of cool stuff to it. Like maybe the octave could go up and down and you could do like a modular kind of look to it. So it's more I'm gonna put always Uh, so you can do a lot of cool stuff like that. When it comes to sound design, that's more of the creative aspect of it, of what you want to do with your pad. Um, now, the last one I'll show you guys is, is my favorite pad, one of the first pads I always learned how to make and was really proud of. It's a simple one, like so, but we have a cutoff on both of these, and then we use a sine wave. I, and this is the Swedish pad for um, Progressive House, so you use that on the cutoff. And it's one six. I don't know why this pad just brings back a lot of memories of making progressive house. It's one of the easier ones to make for sure. But remember learning how to make it. And I was just like, wow, this, this is, this is amazing. <laughs> but I'll end it there guys. Hopefully that helps you guys out with pads and I'll see you guys next time for another episode. The series will almost be coming to an end in at least four or five episodes, but thank you guys for joining me and following these. And I hope these help you out. I could have easily asked, for money for this course or, or made it you know a paid course but i wanted to give this for free out to you guys for the support that you guys give me on my sound design work my sound banks i hope that the sounds i make help you guys make better music and i hope they inspire you to make your own sounds as well with that being said guys you guys take care and you guys have a great day